Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Welcome back to the range. This is my Walther PPQ M2 and 22 long rifle, the five inch barrel version. And this barrel is leaded. More appropriately, I should say the bore is leaded. The bore inside the barrel has accumulated a bunch of lead in it. And I thought it'd be neat to take the bore scope and run it in that bore and show you guys what that looks like. Uh, some of you guys may have not ever seen that. So, uh, this is not a planned video. Uh, I usually try to plan out my videos and work on them through the week and then film them on the weekend. This is not the video I had planned, but since this happened to me this morning, I thought, why not, uh, why not show it on a video? A little bit of history here. Chase and I get together once a month, usually the first Wednesday of each month, and run drills with our 22s. Uh, just going fast, shooting different, uh, running through different drills that we, that we set up. Uh, we do that because it's, well, it's 22s, it's fun, it's cheaper than running with uh, center fire, and it just helps, it's just fun and it helps us stay in tune. Uh, I know it would be better if we could afford to do that with center fire pistols, but it gets real expensive real fast. So, we use these 22s. Well, about three months ago, I was shooting out of one of those federal range packs, the 800 round packs, and I emptied that uh, range pack out that day. And rather than going back up to the house and getting another one, I dug around my range bag and I found a box of these 22 Thunderbolts. Now, I'm not picking on 22 Thunderbolts here. Lord knows I have shot a bunch of these over the years. But not 20 rounds after I switched over to the Thunderbolts, my barrel lit it up. Suddenly, I couldn't hit my target. Now, I'm not a, I'm not an expert shooter, so missing it, you know, missing's not that unusual. But I thought maybe I'm going too fast, I need to slow down. I slowed down and I was still missing. So it occurred to me to set up a paper target and shoot a few rounds on it and make sure my sights hadn't moved or anything like that. And sure enough, some of my bullets were hitting sideways. They were keyholing, is what we call it. They were hitting sideways on the target. And then I knew I had a problem. I popped the slide off the gun, looked through the barrel, and sure enough, I could see some lead deposits in there. So I cleaned it out switched back over uh, to another ammo and never looked back. This morning, I was down here shooting and I was like, I, I saw this in my range bag and I was like, you know, I wonder if that was just a fluke or if that gun really just doesn't get along with this ammo all that well. So, loaded up a couple magazines and within two magazines, <laughs> my barrel is lighted up again. So definitely does not like this ammo, and that can be for a number of reasons. Maybe, you know, it could be improperly sized bullets, uh, improperly lubed. Maybe they aren't lubed. You know, it, a number of things can cause a barrel to lead with a, with a certain ammunition like that. Uh, the gun can have a mechanical problem and, and cause the barrel to lead. It can have a rough cut rifling or something like that, but that's not the case with this one because... I shot so many rounds through it and only had the problem with this particular lot number of Thunderbolts. I'm not saying all Thunderbolts will do this to this gun. It might agree with some of the other ones, but for some reason, this lot number of Thunderbolts leads this barrel heavily. So, like I say, a couple of magazines, about 24 rounds, I'm already keyholing again. I set me a target up. Here's what I'm talking about. I shot five rounds on it. This was only from seven yards. Look how big my group is. Also, two of those bullets hit completely sideways. Uh, that's what we call keyholing. So, let's strip this slide off here and give you guys a look down the bore. I've got my bore scope set up here. Used to be, you know, when I was growing up, you had to take your barrel, your rifle, or your pistol to a gunsmith and have it bore scoped because bore scopes were so expensive. But these little Amazon bore scopes or these little digital bore scopes, they aren't the optical kind like the old guys uh, used to use, but they're very inexpensive. You get them from Amazon, uh, 100 bucks or so. I think this one I got, this is actually for a rifle, but it'll work for this, what I'm going to do here. I think this one was like 130 bucks, and it comes with it. You don't have to hook it to a phone. It comes with its own little monitor and all that stuff. Just really neat. Everybody should have one of these if you do a lot of shooting. You don't have to have one, but it's pretty handy to be able to look in here and see what's going on with your uh, 
with your barrel when you want to. Uh, kind of like a chronograph. You don't have to have a chronograph to reload, but it sure helps. It opens up some of those blind spots for you. I'm going to start this to recording, this borescope, and we'll take a little ride through the barrel. All right, so we're entering the chamber. Look how dirty that is. This gun hasn't been cleaned for a long time either. You can see the six lens and grooves there of the rifling, and look at that. Look at that lead deposit. I can't even get my bore scope through it. So let's come up on that again. Here we're leaving the chamber. There's our rifling. Bam. It's like a big clotted artery, isn't it? That's how I imagine a clotted artery looking. Ah, my bore scope went through that time. Look at the muzzle. Even the muzzle's all lit it up. Going back out. Passing that big deposit there. It's catching on my bore scope. Look at that. That is nasty. So that's why my bullets are keyholing. They're coming up against that big lead deposit, deforming, and then flip-flopping out the end of the uh, muzzle. So here we are, back and out, back out the chamber. There we go. So, so I'm going to go get started on cleaning this, and then I'll, I'll get back with you guys here in a little bit. I think I got the lid out. I've got the bore scope hooked up here. Whoa! There went my glasses. Got to have my reading glasses to see up close here what, to what I'm seeing on the bore scope. I've got it mounted here just to the right of the camera. So let's see what I've done. All right, so we are in the chamber. Look at that rifling now. Creeping through the bore. Man, that looks so much better. Big difference without all those big lead deposits in the way. And look at that muzzle, how much better that looks. So much better. Back and out. Oh my, yeah, that's much better. Coming back out of the chamber. So there you have it. That's what a leaded barrel looks like before and after cleaning. Uh, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope some of you guys may have even found it useful. This bore scope, let me show this thing to you guys. It's actually pretty neat. It's just a, like I say, it's just an Amazon bore scope. I'll provide a link to it in the description of this video. It's self-contained. That's what I like about it. I've got so many apps and things to hook to my phone. I'm just tired of uh, having to go through stuff on my phone. I want something that I can hook up and, and see without having to worry about if my phone's charged or if anything else is going on or somebody tries to call me while I'm doing something or something like that. I like a self-contained unit. Comes with this little LED screen. Uh, records a video, as you'll see here. I'll use the clips out of this. Takes pictures. If you've got a problem, you want to take a picture of it, uh, you can take a picture and send it to your gunsmith or whoever, one of your buddies, uh, your, your gun knowledgeable buddy, and ask them if it's a problem or not. Just a very neat uh, product, and you know, years ago, those optical bore scopes were what the gunsmiths had, and those things are really expensive. They're nice, but they're really expensive. Something like this is all that most uh, uh, gun owners at home are going to need. It also comes with several of these little attachments with the mirrors, so that you can look at the rifling from the side, like you're looking at the side of the bore when you use these little mirrors. I didn't use them today because with that leaded bore, I was afraid I'd break my mirror trying to get it through there. But these are pretty handy if you uh, identify a spot that you want a closer look at. It gives you a really close look at the rifling. And these little mirrors, just thread it onto the end of your bore scope. And how far you thread it on determines the focal length of the mirror. 
So if you're using a 22, you just want it out on the end like that. If you're using a bigger bore, you'll want to thread the mirror all the way in. And there's a little locking ring that you can lock the mirror down with once you get it where you want it. Pretty neat. I'll link it in the description. That will be through my Amazon affiliate link. So it does. when you use that link, it doesn't cost you anything more. But by law, I have to tell you that it is my affiliate link because they do kick a few cents back to my channel if you buy through that link. But that's all I've got for today, I think. I've probably rattled on way too long anyway. But guys, remember, if someone asks you to give up a little bit of your freedom for the greater good, freedom is the greater good. That's all I got. And I'll talk with you guys again soon.